PTA. Um, um, esta es la primera porción, bueno, la segunda porción de la, de la uh, reunión de ahora. Eh, la primera es solamente los miembros, um, digamos, de la mesa del uh, PTA. Y ahorita viene la segunda porción, que es para todos los miembros del PTA. Uh, también tenemos esta noche a Ms. Giordano, que va a estar hablando acerca del currículum de, um, de, para, para, para la escuela. Well, Are... We're going to turn, we'll turn the screen to you Got in just a moment. It. So then if you want to get your, your screen up, I'm going to forward you, Amanda, the um, document that um, my, my yeah, so she's going to okay. present so you can put it up there. Okay. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and have Ms. G get started with her presentation in just a moment. We're just going to get that loaded. So please wait one moment. So tenlos un segundo. Ahorita vamos a esperar por la presentación de Ms. Jordano. I was going to say, is it okay? I mean, well, she, she's having it here, so she could just, when you, yeah. when you advance, she can advance. You sent it to my personal? Oh, yeah. That's right, because I gave you those. Oh, here it is. Found it. Just took a sec. Okay. Um, I did bring some samples of the student readers that I'll just place on the tables in case you are interested in looking at them to see what okay. your kids are reading. Uh, so if you just want to hand them around. They're labeled by um, grade level, and I couldn't get unit one for all grades because they're currently in classrooms. And in kindergarten, I pulled seven and eight because that's when they start getting readers. So that just kind of explains why it's a little random. Sorry. Teresa, are you the host? Yeah. Can you let me share? Sorry, we're no, oh, here. Fine. You, go, you, you can introduce uh -huh. yourself if you want to set that component. Okay. Um, my name is Maria Giordano. I am the reading specialist here at Marydale Elementary School. I've been here my entire yes, career. Oh, sorry. Okay. So, I love Marydale. <laughs> so, uh, mi nombre es María Giordano, soy la um, especialista en uh, lo que se trata de lectura de la Escuela de Maryville. He estado acá por toda mi carrera, so yo amo Maryville. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. um, okay, well, uh, first, welcome. We are very excited to be implementing CKLA um, as a part of our new curriculum this year. We have done a lot of learning around um, the science of reading and structured literacy. So, um, primeramente, bienvenidos. Um, hemos uh, tratado de ahorita, bueno, en el comienzo hemos <laughs> uh, enseñado un poco acerca de la currícula, pero um, estamos muy contentos de enseñarle lo que es el uh, programa de CKLA, que significa CKLA. Este es el currículo nuevo para MCPS de lectura. And um, our new curriculum is actually built and around and aligns with the way, the science of how kids learn to read. So, como el currículum está implementado, es acerca de, de la ciencia, de cómo uh, los niños pueden aprender. And a leer. Oh, <laughs> Essentially, um, That is that they develop foundational skills, which is learning how to read words. So, uh, fundamentalmente, eh, funciona de cómo los niños pueden aprender a leer palabras. And they pair that with knowledge building, which is learning what those words mean. Y uh, eso va al mismo tiempo con lo que es el, el conocimiento de qué pa la palabra significa. So, um, le dan el conocimiento o lo que la palabra significa de lo que están aprendiendo. And that creates skilled readers. Y eso es lo que hace um, como skill. Um, como lo que hace que, que aprendan, digamos, los, la, los um, aprendan, que tengan técnicas de aprendizaje. So what I will go through tonight is um, kind of how the curriculum is set up 
for each grade level. So, como voy a ir um, enseñándoles esta noche, es como la, el currículo va por um, um, cada grado, cada nivel de grado. And I will also share some parent resources that can be used at home. Y también les voy a, de, a mostrar algunos uh, recursos para los papás que puedan usar en casa. So, as I mentioned before, CKLA works on building strong foundational skills to help kids learn to read. Um, so, como se lo dije anteriormente, um, CKLA, que significa CKLA, uh, lo que hace es ayudarles a, um, a construir las fundaciones um, para uh, implementar la lectura. And give students opportunities to explore a lot of um, knowledge domains, so a lot of different content. Y lo que lo lleva a... Um, um, Can you repeat that? Sure. It allows students to explore different, they call them knowledge domains, but essentially different topics and content to okay. build their background knowledge. Okay. So los ayuda como um, detrás del aprendizaje a que puedan um, conten a, 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 a agarrar contenido que... Um, Bien diverso. Diverso. Di diverso. Gracias. <laughs> <laughs> and the way that they do that is by using authentic and diverse texts. Y eso uh, como les ayuda es uh, usando au textos auténticos y diversos. So um, we really are including these texts to allow students an opportunity to see themselves reflected in the text. Um, so estamos, estos libros les ayudan como digamos a que puedan autentificarse con los libros, um, que puedan verse ellos mismos en la lectura también. But also to give them the opportunity to learn about people and experiences that differ from them. Pero también que um, les ayuda a diferenciar um, con lo que pasado a los libros, a las diferente, diferentes uh, personalidades que hay, ¿no? So we have this curriculum in pre-K through grade five. So tenemos esta curriculo desde pre-K hasta el quinto grado. And in pre-K, the design looks like having some starting their day routines. So um, in pre-K, um, comienza eh, la estructura es desde como comienza el día diario de la escuela. The skills looks like beginning to hear sounds whether it's through instruments or in words. Um, sus, um, skills, I know, like foundations or... Um, sus fundaciones, en cómo ellos aprenden. Okay, so, uh, sí, les ayuda como a que um, las fundaciones de lo que están aprendiendo, basado a lo que están aprendiendo. They are also learning content and building background knowledge through read-alouds. So, están aprendiendo basado a um, lo que... Um, están escuchando y lo que están aprendiendo. <laughs> um, el background knowledge significa como lo que están escuchando ellos, digamos. Uh, es así como ellos aprenden. And there will be take-home materials where families can see what has been done during that day and practice at home. Y va a haber material que ellos puedan llevarse a casa y puedan ver lo que están aprendiendo y ayudarles um, también en el aprendizaje. So these are some of the topics that are covered in pre-K. So estos son algunos de los um, temas que ellos ven en pre-K. So I'll just give some time for those at home to read. So, um, les va a dar un tiempo para que puedan leer algunos de ellos. Alguno de ellos um, se los voy a leer. Dice uh, todo acerca de mí, familia y comunidades, los animales, las plantas, las hábitats, um, uh, cuentos, clásicos cuentos. Um, importante, la, la gente más importante en la historia de América son algunos de los temas. When we look at our K to two classrooms, there are actually two 60 minute lessons taught a day during the reading block. So cuando vemos la, el currículo de, en, del grado de kindergarten hasta el segundo, son 60 minutos que son en el término del bloque de lectura que ellos tienen. 
One lesson is focused just on the skill strand, which we will see a little bit more what that involves. So, um, el primero uh, de los bloques es más que todo acerca de los, um, de lo que ellos saben, ¿no? De, de, de lo que ellos um, tienen del conocimiento. And then the second lesson is focused on their knowledge building, and we will see what topics are covered in a few slides. Um, so, el segundo es acerca de um, lo que los los, um, los temas que, que ellos tienen en conocimiento y les voy a mostrar algunos de, um, de eso en las siguientes páginas que voy a mostrar. And so students in these grade levels will receive two workbooks, one for skills and one for knowledge. So uh, los estudiantes um, en estos niveles, en estos grados, van a recibir dos uh, libros uno que es acerca de los skills, que sería como lo que ellos ya tienen, ¿no? Y lo otro acerca de lo que se trata lo, el, el aprendizaje. O oh, el conocimiento, mejor dicho. For the skills strands in K-2, some of the topics or some of the foundational skills that they will be working on are, um, again, phonological awareness, which is um, being able to hear the sounds and words. So, alguno de lo que se trata de, um, más que todo de lo que, del conocimiento de ellos, es acerca de lo que ellos, los sonidos que ellos escuchan. And I also want to highlight um, an exciting part of this curriculum is that it has explicit instruction in handwriting and spelling, which hasn't always been present in previous curriculums we've had. So, algo que es muy importante y que me gusta mucho es de que esta currícula no solo tiene um, algo que las otras currículas que tuvieron anteriormente MCPS no tienen, es que se enfocan también en lo que es la gramática y el poder escribir, ¿no? Con, la, con su mano, el handwriting y el deletrear también. In grades three to five. And, uh, Oh, well, in grades three to five, there, um, the skills and knowledge strands are combined. So there is only one lesson a day. So in en, en los grados tres al cinco, solo hay una, 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 les, una, digamos, un tiempo que ellos tienen para la lectura. Um, y se basa en los dos, lo que el conocimiento que, tiene, que están teniendo en los um, skills que le llaman. Y um, el knowledge, lo que van a aprender, el aprendizaje, ¿no? El And you'll notice that grade three um, is still 120 minutes. And that is because they considered a transition year for students. Ok. <laughs> so, en grado tres, um, son 120 minutos que tienen de ese bloque. Um, y esto es porque se enfocan en lo que es la que va para lo tra la transición que va a tener um, los de grado tercero. Yeah, so it's really their opportunity to strengthen those foundations before going off to fourth grade. So, es para um, asegurarse y ayudar más a que eso sea más fuerte el aprendizaje cuando ellos ya vayan a cuarto grado. Another thing to mention is that in K-2, The comprehension is focused on their listening comprehension. Um, otra cosa más que es importante, que um, la parte de lo que es la comprensión se trata o es basado a lo que ellos escuchan. Because um, we have learned as a, a county that when students are still learning how to read words, they're not able to read and comprehend at the same time. Uh, porque el cani, el, digamos, Montgomery Cani se ha dado cuenta, basado en la información que nos han dado, de que uh, no se pueden concentrar o, digamos, aprender de al todo cuando um, están escuchando o, o haciendo the writing part. Or... So, yeah, so basically reading, if they're having, if they're spending all their time trying to read the words, they're not able to Okay. Yes. Sí, entonces está, um, se ha visto de que no, 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 el aprendizaje no es completo cuando solo están tratando de leer las palabras. Tienen que escucharlo más que todo. 
So in K-2, again, the comprehension is strongly focused on their listening comprehension so that we can build their comprehension separately from building their reading. And that's in grade two, right? En, ajá, en grado 2, por eso es muy importante y es algo que, um, que en lo que están enfocados en de que ellos escuchen más las palabras para que puedan crear algo fuerte en su uh, lectura. And grade 3, as a transition year, also follows, um, it has a lot of read alouds. Okay. Where the teacher is reading and the students are listening for comprehension. So, in el grado 3, también hay mucho de lo que es a la lectura en voz alta, donde los estudiantes se trata de que um, puedan escuchar más lo, la lectura que están dando las profesoras. Something that I um, did not mention with the readers for the text for the students. Um, these are at every grade level and they're um, decodable. So that just means that only skills that students should have learned by that grade level are present in this text so that they should be able to sound out the words in this text. Algo que tal vez no mencioné es que um, los libros que tengo, bueno, el que tengo aquí en la mano, que por cada grado, Cada libro que se les da está basado o la información que está en esos libros es basado a lo que ellos están aprendiendo o que han podido aprender. So, para que um, no, hay, no hay palabras que ellos no han aprendido tal vez todavía, sino que es algo que ellos están aprendiendo en el momento. And when students are listening to read alouds, they don't see the words of that text. They are only looking at pictures. Um, y cuando están teniendo lo que son las lecturas, um, um, que, que es el read aloud, que lo hacen a voz alta la profesora, uh, ellos no están viendo las, las, las imágenes del libro, solo las están escuchando. So that changes once they get to fourth and fifth grade. They are then reading and answering questions on what they have read. So, esto cambia cuando ya van al cuarto grado y al quinto, uh, porque ya están leyendo y viendo uh, las imágenes y escuchando al mismo tiempo. So, even though it's one lesson, as I mentioned, skills are still part of that lesson in third, fourth, and fifth grade. And so, here are some of the skills they might be working on. Um, so, uh, los programas, bueno, del tercer grado al quinto grado, estos son algunos de las um, palabras o las clases de palabras que ellos van a estar usando, um, que se las voy a leer un poco. So, so la, la frecuencia alta de las palabras, de, como um, las palabras que tienen multisílabas, pero que las van como decoding, que significa que las están como... Quebrando, gracias. Uh, los prefijos y los sufijos de las palabras, la derivacional y, uh, y los uh, sufijos latinos, de dónde vienen las palabras como la raíz, de dónde viene la palabra, uh, los sinónimos, anónimos también de las palabras y, y los diferentes significados que la palabra tiene. Um. And then it also will include grammar skills. Uh, también van a incluir la parte de la gramática, donde van los plurales, los singulares, los propios, los nombres propios, los pronombres, los verbos irregulares, los verbos um, en, en pasado, uh, también en, y los sujetos y los predicados, los adjetivos y los adverbios y las contradicciones. Contractions. So I just want to mention too, after each unit, kids can take their activity books for skills or knowledge home. So uh, también les uh, quería comentar que después de que ellos han terminado con el trabajo en los libros, ellos también van a poder llevarse esos libros a casa. Um, y estos son los dos libros, ya sea el del conocimiento y de los skills, que es lo que están en el aprendizaje, ¿no? 
Um, but the readers will stay at school and will get used year after year. Pero los libros que son la lectura de los libros que están leyendo, que el que ella mostró que tenía en la mano, eso sí se van a quedar en escuela porque van a ser reusados. Okay, you don't have to read each one of these because oh. <laughs> this, this shows you um, the different topics at each grade level and a few are highlighted to show how the content builds from kindergarten through grade five. So estos um, son algunos de los temas que ellos están viendo desde kindergarten hasta quinto grado. Um, ella ha highlighted, ha hecho como como más um, para que vean esas, esas, esos temas de esos libros, para que vean cómo varía, uh, cómo va variando según el grado. And I will be sure to ask Megan or Olivia to send out this PowerPoint so that we all have access to it along with the links from some other resources. So, uh, se va a asegurar de hacerle uh, llegar esta presentación a, a Miss Megan, que es la presidenta, y al PTA para que ella también, ellos también puedan um, hacerle llegar a todos ustedes esto y además res, um, más material que pueden ayudarles a ustedes en casa. So the next part, I'm going to share some resources that you can use at home with your student because practicing what they're doing at school is a great reinforcement for helping them at home. So um, esto que les estoy mostrando ahorita son algunos uh, de las um, de las información o también trabajos que hay para que los niños puedan llevar, los estudiantes puedan llevar a, a casa, porque es importante también que practiquen en, en casa para que puedan um, desenvolverse mejor en lo que es la lectura en la escuela y ap el aprendizaje que ellos tienen. Okay. So the first um, was every unit begins with a take-home letter. So you should receive a take-home letter that explains what the unit is about. So la primera, um, el primer documento que tuvieron que haber recibido o van a recibir es una carta para llevar a casa que es la información de lo que están viendo ahorita en la escuela. If you wanted to take notes. <laughs> A little late, but if anyone wants one, <laughs> I made them. Really I'll save them for next time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. Um, okay. <laughs> and um, there are also two other resources which I printed for everyone here. One being questions that you can ask your student at home, your child at home, and depending on the text type. Ok, so um, también hay otra información que tengo por acá que um, es acerca de las preguntas que ustedes les pueden hacer a los niños en casa para que vean lo que están aprendiendo y ellos puedan um, como a tener des, des, como poder hablar con ustedes de lo que ellos están viendo durante la semana. Them reading at home. Y el otro es a un documento de que um, les ayuda a ustedes como papás para ver cómo poder ayudarles a sus hijos. And all the documents are translated into Spanish as well, so I will make sure to send those out with the presentation. Y lo, todos los documentos están también traducidos al espe el español, so ella se va a asegurar de también hacerles llegar eso a ustedes. And I have them in Spanish here as well, if anyone would like them. Ah, ahorita está diciendo de que también está en español aquí ahorita, so si alguien lo necesita. And I lost my presentation notes. Not that I was using them, but okay. <laughs> so if you see them. Um, okay, so the next is there is a caregiver hub for CKLA. So, también um, esta que les estoy mostrando ahorita es lo que es un, es como cuidado, digamos, como una página para poder ayudarles a los papás con donde hay muchos, muchos, uh, y mucha información, ¿no? And so, on this hub, they can reread stories from class. So, en esta página, los niños pueden um, releer los, las historias que han visto en clase. And they can also practice their grade level skills. 
foundational so, skills. También uh, pueden practicar las fundaciones de lo que han del aprendizaje que están teniendo. As well as vocabulary. También el vocabulario. Um, I'm going to share logins on the next slide. So, voy a, en la siguiente página que les voy a mostrar, voy a, um, en, de, voy a enseñarles los, uh, cómo acceder a las páginas con los, uh, los, uh, los, um, hold on, con, la, con las identificaciones que se necesitan y contraseñas para entrar. Um, and I will also have those in English and Spanish that I can send out in an email. Ah, uh, también los va a tener en español y en inglés y ella también lo va a poder mandar en un email. The directions are also included on that handout. If and I'm happy to show everyone how to log in if that's something. Y that... eh, um, también hay instrucciones de cómo poder hacer um, uso y cómo poder acceder a esa página en español. So you can get there by either scanning the QR. So code. pueden llegar a ese uh, website, ya sea escaneando el código QR o. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, or, oops, logging into, it's not on the slide, logging into um, ckla.amplify.com. Um, o yéndose al sitio web que es ckla.amplify.com eh, eh, um, El palito cruzado, home, lo siento, se me olvidó. You're doing great. <laughs> Uh, so here are the logins. Anyone can use these, um, even if your child is in French immersion. Everyone has access to these universal logins. So todos tienen acceso a estos, um, a estos, a esta información para poder acceder a esta página con los passwords, porque es uh, para todos, ya sea que incluso que los niños estén en el programa de francés. And so there's videos to help build background knowledge in K-2. So hay videos también para que puedan um, crear como conocimiento. There's also videos in K-2 to help them with their learning sounds. También hay videos acerca de los sonidos para los niños que están en el grado kindergarten a segundo. And there are vocabulary games for students in three to five. También hay um, aplicaciones con vo como juegos de vocabulario para los niños que están en tercero a quinto. So if students were to miss a story in school, they could catch up with that story at home. So, si algún estudiante, digamos, faltó a clase, ellos pueden acceder a lo que um, se perdieron durante ese día accediendo a este website um, para que puedan uh, continuar con el, la lectura del día que han tenido en la clase de ellos. And then the final component. Y el último componente. <laughs> is called Boost Reading. Uh, es lo que es el boost reading, como es como una, digamos, como adición más a la lectura. Lo voy a poner así. So this is a program that is um, aligned exactly with your child's needs. So este, um, el, lo que se trata el programa está basado a lo que específicamente a lo que su hijo necesita, a las necesidades de su hijo en la lectura, ¿no? And it is determined through a placement test that they take at the beginning. Y está basado en un, um, en un examen que ellos tomaron al principio del año escolar. As they complete lessons, the program adapts so that if they need more challenging work, or to have extra practice in a skill, it meets them where they are. Um, uh, as, as según ellos van avanzando en las lesión, las, la, los temas diarios que tienen todos los días, el mismo um, programa 
va personalizando, por decirlo así, la instrucción para, para los niños. So students will have opportunities to do this at school. So um, los niños van a poder acceder a esto en la escuela. It can also be done at home. However, it must be done independently since it will change based on how students are doing. Puede um, ser en, a tomado en casa, pero um, tiene, tienen que asegurarse que puede cambiar porque um, está basado, uh, you, need, you say the needs, right, of mm -hmm. each one. Ha basado a las necesidades de lo que tiene cada niño en la lectura. And so that was my, the end of my presentation, um, but I'm happy to take any questions. So, este es el final de mi presentación, pero estoy muy contenta de responder a cualquier pregunta que tengan. <laughs> There's a question in the chat about whether this applies to the French classes too or just English classes. So, it's just um, for our English program at this time. Our French program is going to follow the same um, system that they've done that has been successful for years, which is to align to the Common Core State Standards. So la pregunta era acerca si este currículum de lectura también es para los niños de, uh, que están en el programa de francés. Actualmente el currículo um, de Amplify no está ahorita para los del programa de francés, pero los que están en el programa de plan, del francés van a seguir implementando lo que hasta el momento ha funcionado y han estado haciendo bien um, el programa que han tenido, que han venido teniendo antes. I, I have a question. Sure. This is Brent, Brent Engler. Um, I was at one of the Dr. Taylor listening sessions And it sounded like, I guess, at least some of the special education and ELD teachers in the county, at least, were pretty unhappy with the transition to Amplify, that they weren't getting their materials, that they weren't able to differentiate within the classroom. Has that been an experience at Maryvale, or do you know, is, is Maryvale not having those issues? Um, and so it's my understanding that a lot of those um, special education teachers were at learning centers or schools with special programs. We do have a CAP program here um, and they have their materials at this time. They are always in a position where they have to uh, kind of adapt for the needs of their students. Um, and so we are blessed with very amazing teachers at this school. Um, who know their students well and are able to make those adaptations. I know for speaking to, for our special education teachers in pre-K to five, a lot of them are doing plug-in support. And so they are providing, I'm so sorry, I forgot about translating. It's okay. Just okay. Continue. <laughs> okay. I'm like, I'm going on and on. Okay. Um, and so they provide, um, different supports to help those students reach the grade level content within what we call tier one instruction. However, they also have times that they can get pulled out to work with um, specific programs to target their foundational needs. Summarize. Do you want to? Yes, we got all of our materials. We do. Yeah, I said that. I said we all have we have our materials. Yeah. 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 So I'm so sorry. Okay. Are there any other questions in the chat or oh, do you guys not no longer do running records anymore for the so yeah, so when we made the shift to structured literacy, um, we still do running records. We just do them on different types of texts. What we learned, I'm so sorry. Again. It's okay. Okay. What we learned was that um, when we were doing running records with leveled texts, we were assessing kids on skills that they had not been taught. And so it really was an unfair assessment. Mm -hmm. Now um, teachers do running records with grade level text. So they are um, words that they should be able to decode at that grade level. And so that kind of tells us, okay, who is able to read grade level text? 
who do we need to collect more data on to find out those specific skill areas that they need support with? Yeah. yeah. I remember having that big bag with Pinnell's box. I time. finally <laughs> got rid of them. I held on to them because I was like, you never know. But they, yeah, we we do running records, just not on level text. Yeah. Was there one in the chat? No, but there is. Okay. Thank you, Miss G, very much. We Thank very you. much appreciate it. Thank, yeah, Thank you, Kathy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yes. um, oh, can, may I ask one quick question, uh, Megan? Yes, right. Was there a password? Oh, sorry, I can't. Was there a password to get to the Amplify CKLA boost reading resources that we needed again? Yes, I, think yes. she, I think she mentioned a password. But she's going to. Multiple things. So that password is actually their student login um, and mm -hmm. password that they would use to get onto their Chromebooks. Oh, okay. For yeah. So it's, it's the For same. So it's okay. the same student login that they use, like their MCPS login. Well, so I do want to clarify. Thank you. Uh, that that unfortunately Boost is only um, for our students who are in English. Oh. Yeah. Ah, so, solo, solo están queriendo aclarar un poco porque tal vez hay padres también de French Immersion uh, es uh, de que el, lo que se trataba del boost reading es solo para los niños que están en, en, en inglés no en el lado del French Immersion I, ok, I, I don't ok, I I remember I was on the committee when we were choosing the the elementary reading programs, and we were choose when we were choosing the reading programs. Like one of the one of the criteria was that it was the resources were available in different languages. Mm -hmm. So now I'm surprised that we're limiting the resources to kids only in an English program because I know the materials are available in multiple languages. So it doesn't this yeah, I'm surprised. I'm happy to double check and confirm that for you. Um, and I can, if you yes, send you. your name in the chat, Madam. Um, I don't know if you remember when we were choosing a math curriculum, Eureka said it was in yes. languages, but what they meant specifically is the website itself is available in multiple languages, but the resources themselves are not available in multiple languages. Does that make sense? So this could be the distinction for CKLA. I don't know. And Ms. Giordano is going to check on that. But that was the issue with Eureka Math, right? It was said available in multiple languages, but only the website itself, not the resources. But, but even if the children want to do the, the Amplify in English oh, and they're in the French, they should be able to. You think? I agree, but that yes, uh, yes, and right. that is what I yes I will ask. Sorry, because a lot of times it comes down to what needed to be purchased um for certain programs, and so that's where I will definitely thank you um, check for you because I think thank it you. Would be a great resource for all families to have um, if it's available. Thank you so much. That one is available to everybody. Yes. So, so the so the one with the story vocabulary games you're saying correct. can that get. one is universal um for everyone. Uh, the only reason I have to double check on the boost is because it is specific to a, a child's login. So you don't need any login to get to the 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 Amplify CKLA story vocabulary games. You don't need any login. You do need a login. It's just the same for every single student. It's this document that we will send out in an email. So it's one login per grade level, whereas Boost would be your child's specific login. That's like so it's a five their ID number. M A R E. Oh goodness, I'm sorry. You're we're fine. Gonna, we're gonna send out via email. Raya, yes. Raya, uh, Miss Bailey, and myself are both gonna send out uh, uh, Miss G's all presentation and all the paperwork that she handed out. So everything and will the be. Links are in the presentation. And the links are in the presentation as well. So we're gonna include the presentation. Thank you. Uh, and highlight all those items as well as i'm going to create a, a survey for feedback and i will send that to you okay, as perfect. well to okay. send out thank you so much thank you very much thank you any other additional questions that anyone has for Ms. G before she departs from us okay thank you very much so i'm gonna we're gonna go ahead and um 
I actually have to leave it before I bet Deb and then Amanda Roberts is going to continue our meeting. No, but yeah, so Tyler, um, Miss Bailey is going to give her presentation, but we're going to, she's going to come over here and I'm going to head out. Thank you all for coming and I will see you all next month. I oh, one caveat that we wanted to announce is that if you have any personal questions relating to yourself or your child, to contact the office directly. This is this meeting is not for that venue, so contact the front office for that, please. Thank you kindly. What she said. <laughs> so I, um, good good evening, everyone. <laughs> um, I hope everybody is having a a great evening. I am so tired. Um, it's been a really long day. I, I do want to share with everybody that October is going to be a very busy month here at Maryvale. We have quite a few things going on during the month of October. And so I just, um, I shared during, shared with you during the, our Sunday um, weekly message that we are doing a Hispanic Heritage Week. I know that September 15th to October 15th is Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month, but this has not previously been done at Maryville. So we're um, trying our hand with doing a week's worth of activities. And so, um, you know, wish us luck. We have a, a, a lot of things planned and a lot of them are school-based. We have um, a, a grade level hallway decorating contest and um, we are focusing um, on important people in the areas of STEAM. I'm gonna send this out uh, to everyone. So, or I'll share this in Sunday's message. Um, we are also going to have an assembly for grades three through five, um, a Afro-Brazilian dance company out of Baltimore. Um, they will be um, doing a presentation on October 11th for grades three through five. Um, this was a, a very expensive event. So we're only doing grades three through five. Grades uh, K to two will have other activities that have been um, specifically designed that can be facilitated by the teachers inside of the classroom. And then we're hoping that we can do something for them later on, more of an assembly type. Um, from what I hear, we haven't had um, many assemblies in a very long time. Yeah. So I'm glad, uh, so, so, so I'm really excited that we are, um, have, we have this opportunity to have um, an assembly. We're also doing a Hispanic Heritage Did You Know? So they will be read over the PA system in the morning. And I'm really excited um, during that week, we are going to, um, find uh, music and, you know, Disney has a lot of um, Hispanic um, uh, Disney movies. So we're, we'll be doing, we'll be playing music from movies like Coco and Kanto, which I actually love, you know, do you know about Bruno? No, 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 no. Don't talk about Bruno. Okay, don't talk about Bruno. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we'll be doing that. Um, and then Kids Bop and Espanol and um, some music from Spotify. So this is something that we haven't done before. So we're trying our hand at it and seeing, you know, where we go. Um, and that's going to be from October 7th through October 11th. Um, something else that we're doing during the month of October, we are doing a fall spirit week so the fall spirit week is going to consist of um you know we believe in you so they'll be doing wearing fall colors they'll be wearing um you know jerseys for fall sports um you know they'll do dress to impress um thursday which is halloween we're going to do something called a pumpkin patch dash and so which is similar to a, a fun run so we'll be doing a fun run and then on friday we'll do um the snuggle is real and so that'll be a pajama day and of course that's the friday before the kids are out for the next two days um Tomorrow morning, I am meeting with the leadership team. And so during that time, we're going to shore up some things about the fall spirit week, um, whether or not uh, how we'll do snacks after the fun run and what we would like um, to happen. I definitely would like parent volunteers for the fall fun run um, or the, the pumpkin patch dash. Um, and so we're saying like maybe two uh, parents per class to help out. 
Um, we'll be outside. I'm crossing my fingers and hoping hoping that it's a beautiful day. Um, hopefully all this rain will go away and um, you can participate outside. What's the date again? That would be that the pumpkin patch dash will actually be on October 31st. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have um, the week, actually the week before the fall spirit week, we will have mental health awareness um, week and that's more of for the students and there's different activities that the students will be doing um, to help them focus on their mental health and this is um, something that the system is pushing out to the students. Um, also during that week I want to say we have picture day because I've been getting emails and they're like when's picture day? Picture day is October 25th so please make sure that during that day, your children are dressed to impress so that they can take their fall picture. I actually forgot to tell you, October is um, my favorite month of the year. Uh, it's National Principals Month. So okay. if you see a principal, <laughs> hug a principal and say hello, say something nice. And then in addition to it being National Principals Month, it's also my birth month. So October doesn't get any better for me. So I'm really excited about the month of October. We have a lot of things going on and I hope that we can get your participation. Um, I'm really pleased with the numbers of people who are reading the s'mores s'more weekly, but I'm getting about 50% of our, our population, but I would like to get more. I know I send the s'more out to a thousand, a little over a thousand people. And so I'm averaging about 500 or so readership. Um, so hopefully everybody is reading it. They're seeing the utility of it. It's easy for you to use. Um, and you know, please, your feedback is always welcome on communication. Um, and hopefully like you have access to remind and remind is actually helpful to you. I think it's helpful, but you know, only if you're using it. Uh, does anybody have any questions for me? And I, I don't have my glasses on, so I can't see the, yeah, let me um, see. The, like the monitor. Yeah. <clears throat> Are there any questions? Nope. Okay. I would just note there. Um, uh, so just to read aloud for those in the room, there is a comment here um, from Stephanie regarding the last one. It would be great to have an equivalent presentation for the French program curriculum resources. What years specialists are available, et cetera, for an upcoming PTA meeting? Okay. For I will share that with, and I will tell you um, one of the things about our um, Eureka everything already comes um, in French. And so that works out. I will tell you, our teachers work really hard um, when it comes to ELA because they have to, um, they're actually working off of the standards. And so that's more work. Whereas um, on the English side, they have the curriculum pretty much laid out for them. And so they is, you know, use it like a menu, pick and choose. And so our um, French teachers are actually, you know, taking the standards, creating documents, um, finding authentic text to, um, to use and authentic stories to use for, um, for the ELA portion. So I will talk to, um, what I will say is we have um, partnered with our sister school, which is Sligo Creek Elementary and um, Madam Riley, and, and I, I don't know her last name, but I know her first name is Nellie. They work really well together to make sure that um, it's an alignment between the, um, the two schools. And so I will share that with Madam Riley. And so maybe we can do a smaller something because, you know, just for immersion parents, even though I really don't like the exclusivity, but you know, um, so that they can have that information. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Miss Bailey. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Sorry. Yeah. I think I'm technically yeah. in charge yeah. of this right now. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so thank you, Miss Bailey. Uh, next up on our agenda is an NAACP update from Raya Hamilton. So take it away. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to try not to be uh, very controversial. So when I'm speaking from my point of view, I'll try to make that clear um, from when I'm speaking from the NAACP. Um, but our last meeting on September 18th um, was really, really important. 
So I encourage you to check out the video. Um, um, Miss uh, Bailey and uh, Megan forwarded um, the notes and the video out to families. Um, a lot of the focus was on the district um, literacy data, um, which uh, was not positive for uh, Black and Latino kids. Um, now I'm speaking from Raya Hamilton. So <laughs> um, in all honesty, from, from my research, you know, Black and Latino kids across the country, generally the data hasn't been good for like 25 years. Um, in our district, it hasn't been good for that, that amount of time. Um, the, we, we hope that the move to, you know, amplify and science of reading is going to improve that because the data on reading shows that, you know, most, well, it shows that a significant number of kids really need phonics to learn how to read um, and they haven't been getting phonics. Um, so we're hoping that that will help. But it's not just the absence of phonics that's created this problem with Black and Latino kids. There's many other issues that need to be addressed. You know, it's around 50% of Black kids in MCPS are not reading at the proficient level. I mean, I mean that's unacceptable. Um, and it's even, and it's around 30% for Latino kids, uh, and only 30% of Latino kids are hitting the proficiency rate. That's unacceptable. Um, so there's a lot of work that needs to be done and a lot of pressure needs to be put on the district so that they understand like this is really an emergency because this is a longstanding problem people like admit, okay, from Raya's point of view, may forget that this is an urgent, urgent matter. It's urgent that kids, that children can read well so they can reach their full potential, so they can get into competitive schools. You know, the numbers at Harvard for Black and Latino kids have plummeted. Affirmative action is gone. Our numbers are plummeting. You know, we have to really help our kids. Um, we have to advocate for our kids. Okay, this is back to NAACP. So what can you do, parents? Um, October 23rd, please uh, mark your calendar. Everybody, you, you don't have to be Black or Latino. Um, you just have to be somebody who cares deeply about every child reaching their potential. Um, and we really want, you know, representatives from each school even Maryvale, a school where we are slightly above the district average in terms of our numbers, but we still need to do better. Uh, we're going to be meeting at Wheaton High School uh, to meet with um, the, the new superintendent, um, Dr. Taylor, but really it, it's good to meet with him, but we really need to show that we care, you know, show our strength as parents and show that we want to work as a team to address this issue. Um, so there's information about the September 23rd meeting that's already gone out, um, I think in the notes with Ms. Bailey, and I think Megan's going to um, uh, forward that information out to you in her notes soon, but I just want to encourage everyone. Oh, and the good thing about those meetings is that food is provided. It's always yummy multicultural food for free. And there's even free child care for kids, um, I think, up to second grade. And last year I went and brought my kids and they really enjoy the free child care. And I really enjoy the, the yummy um, Latino food. So just encourage everyone to go. Like This is an urgent matter. Um, we, we want our kids to, to achieve. What was the date on that again? Um, it's coming up uh, October 23rd. It's at Wheaton High School. I believe it's at six o'clock. Let me just double check that time. Sorry, I can hear my kids a little bit noisy downstairs. I hope you cannot hear them. Let's see. Let's see. One second. Okay, it's coming up. Yes, 23rd. Oh, so slow. Of course, when you want something, it's very slow. <laughs> um, uh, yes, 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 six to eight. 
Okay. Okay. Is and that everything right? Oh, sorry. I, I think that really is about everything. There's always, oh, the other thing, um, October 9th, there's a Board of Education Forum um, encouraging everyone to go and, and just see, you know, who's on the board actually really does matter. So, you know, going to that forum to hear where people are coming from, it, it really does matter in terms of, you know, people decide about, you know, we had in the past like book banning and, you know, where are people's commitments to equity? Like all of those things matters. So just encouraging folks to also come out for October 9th for the Board of Education Forum. Okay, I think th that's, those are the big things. Okay. Thank you so much, Ryan. I really appreciate all the work that you're doing. Um, means a lot to me and I know the rest of the PTA as well. Um, so thank you so much. And definitely we'll get that information out um, mm -hmm. and our messaging to encourage folks to go to those meetings. Um, really appreciate it. We do have a few minutes for uh, Rachel uh, to do a fundraising update. Rachel, are you on no. Zoom? Rachel had to drop. So I'm oh, Rachel's you're Rachel. Hi. proxy via, <laughs> via mad text. So Rachel's our fundraising uh, <clears throat> chair. And unfortunately, she had to drop off unless you're on Rachel, correct me. So a couple of things to note. First of all, um, probably the most fun part of being in elementary school is the Scholastic Book Fair. So it is coming uh, November 11th through the 19th. Um, so we will be transforming Mary Bell into Scholastic Book Fair again, uh, November 11th through the 19th. We will need lots and lots and lots of volunteers during that time to work the book fair, certainly during the day, but we also will have some evening hours um, where we will need some help to run the cash register and sell the books. Um, so uh, look out for some uh, sign up geniuses, et cetera. Just a quick reminder that applies to all volunteering across everything. You do need to do the child abuse awareness training um, in order to be certified to do any volunteering. It only takes about 30 minutes. It lasts three years. So if you've done in the last three years, you're good. I just retook it like two weeks ago. It's not, doesn't take very long, but um, they actually uh, keep a record of this. And, you know, in order to, to volunteer for the fall events or book fair or movie night or anything to that effect, you will need to take the training. I highly recommend you do it. How do you take the training? Okay. So very confusing. Log on to parent view. Once you're on parent view, you go to your own, my classroom. And then like, it's a class on the left. Okay. Like it, it's, we'll have to send something out. It's not particularly user-friendly, but basically what you do is it's like you're a, as a parent, you have a, at my MCPS classroom, that you may have never even gone to it. You link it through it through parent view. And then once you're in that classroom on the left, I like your classes. And one of them is volunteer training. And that's how you access it. And you watch, it's a video. You watch mm -hmm. the video and at the end, you certify that you've done it. And that somehow sends to the front office and various lists, the fact that you have now done this. So just to let you know. Has anyone been able to access it via your phone or do you have to do it on that? I did it on my laptop. I did it too. On my, it took me like you know, probably double the time trying to figure out how to do it. On oh, my it phone. was like <laughs> user <laughs> friendliness. Yeah, it's I'm not. It yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would recommend a computer if you have it because I, I it's not it's not a great interface. But yeah, yeah. I don't know if others on the line have. Um, any other like insights on that? Um, a couple other quick things. Um, uh, this coming Monday, uh, the 10th, I'm sorry, the, the 7th, 10th month, October 10th, October 7th, I will get it out, Monday, uh, Chick-fil-A Dine Out fundraiser, the one on Research Row. So the one um, on like the other side of 270. Um, I don't know the hours because she didn't text me that, but dinner time. Um, so 20% of, sorry? Three to seven. Three to seven. Oh, Sandra, you're on. Do you want to talk? I'm sorry. Do you want to talk? You're doing great. No, I, <laughs> I, I can. I do have an update for the Taco Bamba fundraiser. I don't know if she shared that. She did um, not. We raised okay. 254 for that. So. Awesome. Or no, sorry, 273. Okay. Awesome. So then, come get a chicken on Monday. Um, research row. Uh, anything else, Sandra, while you're on any other updates? I don't have anything. Sorry. Um, any questions about fundraising updates or volunteering? 
thing. Um, and then, yeah, Brent's logging back on. Thank you, Brent. Let me know when you're on, Brent. Uh, I'm, Brent I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Sorry, I'm texting you on the side. No, no problem. Yeah. Um, we asked Brent to give a, uh, you are a cluster representative. Hi, <laughs> Bia. <laughs> um, Brent is our cluster rep, and we've asked him to give a brief update on uh, the uh, listening session town hall. I'm not sure what the word is with Dr. Taylor at Rockville High School. I believe that was two weeks ago. So go take the mic, Brent. Okay. Yeah, thank you. And I actually, I put a, a link to an article in MoCo 360, which I think does a very, very good summary of the one that I went to. Um, and I think they've summarized some of the other meetings as well. It sounded to me like there were uh, a couple of recurring topics of concern. I would say that um, there were about 100 to 150 people at the Rockville session, which ended up going late because um, a lot of people had lined up to talk. So I didn't get to stay for the whole thing. But, um, you know, I, I was I was. Um, uh, I thought Dr. Taylor seemed very competent and, and sincere. Um, no, honey. <laughs> Um, although he didn't give a lot of, I think, um, like, like specific solutions to a lot of the, the issues people brought up. There was a lot of talk about does the frustration about the, the virtual academy being closed. There was actually a small protest outside the school um, urging any, any actions that could be taken to bring it back, to restore funding, to have a, a better solution for the students. Yes. Right. So that, that still, I think, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, a, a point of contention amongst for a lot of parents in this county. I don't know how Maryville um, parents have have experienced that that adjustment. Um, there was also, I, I think, like I mentioned earlier in the call, um, I think three separate special ed teachers from different schools in the county talked about how they hadn't received um, any materials specifically for special ed and differentiation from um, court for the core knowledge curriculum. And they were very frustrated with the county about that. Um, Dr. Taylor said he'd look into it, but that seemed to be news to him. Um, and um, there was a little talk about whether the county would be implementing um, some sort of cell phone policy. And he said that different schools in the county are experimenting with different options, including possibly Rockville High. Um, so that's something that I'll ask about. I'm trying to organize the cluster call for the fall quarter in the next couple of weeks. So um, if anybody wants me to bring up anything to the other people in the Rockville High Cluster, I'm happy to do so. And then I can report back um, at the next PTA meeting. Thank you. Okay. Cool. Is that everything? Yeah, there is a question in the chat. Acacia, if you're on, um, you this might be one actually for you around teacher reimbursements. Acacia, are you on? I do see her there, yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm here. Uh, so if a Regarding budget, if a teacher has expressed a need for supplies, Kleenex, whiteboard markers, et cetera, is there a mechanism to purchase on, them be, on their behalf and get reimbursed? Uh, we've had those things in the past, but we don't have, like, they would just need to be reimbursed if we don't have supplies at the school. Um, but we don't have a place where people can go in and purchase it for the staff is that what you're asking uh stephanie does that answer your question and that was in the chat so we may have to wait for yeah um i mean typically a staff member for incidentals in their classroom whatever it is if as long as they're a member of the pta they can submit their uh, receipts to the office and be reimbursed up to $95. Um, reimbursements outside of that are on like a grant request. And those typically are not for things like Kleenex and tissues. Those are things like uh, wiggle chairs and um, wagons larger items for the classroom that are more expensive and uh stephanie asked a follow-up question in the chat about parents being able to purchase and get reimbursed on behalf of their child's classroom and i i believe the answer is no to that no uh, i'm sorry we don't have that we don't yeah i don't that, think that no. that's that would just be a donation out of the goodness of your heart which Correct. you can choose mm -hmm. to do if you want 
Um, I do see another uh, question in the chat about who decides about a school having a no cell phone policy. I mean, I don't actively I have know. A partial, I mean, my son's a middle school, so I do know that the middle schools are making their own decisions at this point. There isn't, I don't think, a countywide policy. Mm -hmm. uh, at Wood Middle, the school decided that there are no phones. They have to stay in the locker um, all day long. And it's my understanding that Rockville High School instituted that this year as well. Um, did too, which is the other big fear. Gaither, you said well. that? Yeah. Gaithersburg, Gaithersburg also. Talking away all day. Right, off and away all day at Gaithersburg. Um, so it's right now it seems to be a school by school decision, but it sounds like that was a hot topic for whether it should be a countywide decision. was spotily enforced, and so they were choosing to enforce it. But I don't have the details of that or any independent verification. Thank you, Teresa. Um, okay, does anybody else have any pressing questions that they feel are directly relevant to the entire group that they would like to ask? Because we are now over time. Give a few seconds here. Not seeing anything in the chat. Okay, um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm always accessible by email. I'm vp at maryvalepta.ed. Org. Org. Org, sorry. <laughs> uh, Dot org Again, that's vp at maryvalepta.org. So if you have a question you think is more appropriate for one-on-one, -on -one, um, feel free to email me. I'm Tyler. I don't think I actually introduced myself to this meeting yet. Um, so I'm the vice president. Um, otherwise, our next meeting right now will be in November, first, first Tuesday in November. Um, so we look forward to you joining us then. Um, and I hope you all have a great rest, your, rest of your weeks. It's not election day, is it? Or is it? It is. Oh, if it's election day there. Yeah, we'll have to change. We'll have to. Well, more fun be. regarding the meeting times. Okay, well, be be on the lookout for our PTA newsletter um, regarding when the November meeting will be because it will not be on election day when the building is closed. And if you subscribe to the calendar, you'll receive the update <laughs> automatically. Okay, thanks everybody. Have a good night. Okay. <clears throat>